Welcome to the Merton Heritage Alphabet, an A to Z of our borough's colourful past. Our next letter T is for tobacco, and there are many local associations with tobacco processing in the Merton area, notably the grinding of snuff. During the reign of Elizabeth I, her Lord Treasurer William Cecil and his family owned the old rectory on Church Road in Wimbledon. William was one of those responsible for gaining the Queen's financial backing for the slave trading missions of John Hawkins, uncle of Sir Francis Drake. The English became involved in trading slaves captured in Africa and sent to work in the Spanish colonies in the Caribbean. Many of these slaves would have been forced to work on tobacco plantations. Tobacco was first introduced to England in the 16th century by royal favourite and adventurer Sir Walter Raleigh. He owned land in Mitcham, including a site near Eagle House on London Road through his marriage to Bess Throgmorton, daughter of a wealthy diplomat. During the 1580s and 90s, Raleigh established Roanoke Colony in Virginia in America. It was from his work here that tobacco, potatoes and maize were introduced to England. The English soon became addicted to the nicotine content in tobacco leaf, which they smoked in clay pipes, chewed as heavy wads or ground into a powder known as snuff. From 1619 onwards, African slaves were being transported to work on giant tobacco plantations established in the fertile soils of the Virginian colony. By the 1630s, it was shipping a million pounds of tobacco to England, and during the 18th century, 100,000 new slaves were sent to Virginia and tobacco exports rose to 220 million pounds. From the 18th century onwards, the River Wandle was used to power the snuff industry in the UK. Giant water wheels drove the machinery that ground tobacco leaves into fine powder. This was thought to clear the senses and stimulate the mind if snorted up the nose to promote sneezing. Snuff grinding was hard work. Descriptions refer to the use of giant drying kilns and the tobacco leaves were then ground using large pestles and wooden mortars. Flavourings were then added ranging from cinnamon and cloves to bergamot and even Mitcham lavender. The snuff was then sifted, blended and packed. The air in a snuff mill was heavy with tobacco dust, which covered all surfaces. Workers often had to wear wet sponge respirators and paper hats to protect themselves, but needed additional air in hot weather. There are several examples of snuff mills operating in the Mitcham and Morden area. This is Richard Glover's snuff mill near Mitcham Bridge. Glover acquired the mill from Lionel Gregory in 1774. He started milling flour before switching to snuff grinding. The mill remained in the Glover family until 1840, first through Richard Glover II and then John Glover, his younger brother. Business appears to have finished in the mid-1840s and the mill stood unoccupied and unused until it was demolished in 1922. These are the Morden snuff mills built in the 1750s. From 1758, the Eastern Mill was leased to Peter Davenport, then from 1779 it had a lengthy association with the Pole Hill family. The West Mill shown here dates from 1830. By 1845, both mills had been leased to James Taddy & Co, a London-based manufacturer originally based at Fenchurch Street. The company director was Alexander Hatfield. The firm had been founded by his maternal grandfather. Alexander had a joint lease on Morden Snuff Mill with his son Gilliatt from 1859. Their mill used a complex system of shifts, cogs and gears, turning heavy millstones against a grooved bedstone to grind tobacco leaves into snuff. By 1865, the Hatfield family had amassed a large fortune from tobacco and snuff processing, and in 1872, Gilliatt was able to buy the manor of Morden from the Garth family, occupying Morden Hall as his family home. Snuff production ceased at the Hatfield Mill in 1922, when non-unionised employees at Morden Hall came out in sympathy with the Taddy & Co cigarette workers in London. Gilliatt's son, Gilliatt Edward Hatfield, opted to close the works rather than engage in a lengthy industrial dispute. Today, the Snuff Mill is part of a teaching and visitor facility run by the National Trust as part of their Morden Hall estate. Situated near the junction of Morden Hall and Wandall Road, the Ravensbury Mill was built in the 1680s, straddling the River Wandall. By the 18th century, it was grinding tobacco into snuff, using a two-wheel setup as at Morden Hall. The current mill building was constructed around 1804 for Martin Peaks & Co, London tobacconists. By 1805, it was part of John Rutter's city tobacco and snuff firm. During the Victorian era, the declining popularity of snuff switched Rutter's focus onto processing pipe and cigarette tobacco, including their variety Mitcham Shag. Production continued at the site until 1925. 
Raven Spree Mill was later bought by Whiteley Products, manufacturers of rubber cords, luggage straps, chest expanders, and even plain arrestor gear. Today, the mill stands within a residential complex. The building itself is empty, but it is hoped that it will ultimately house Wandle Industrial Museum, currently based at a building off London Road in Mitcham. If you would like to know more about Merton's heritage, visit out Merton Memories website at www.merton.gov.uk forward slash memories. You can also find more information at Merton Heritage and Local Studies Centre, located on the second floor of Morden Library.